Have you ever wondered what the inside of your water heater looks like? Well, today we're gonna cut these ones open, take a look inside, see what happens when they're not properly maintained talk about how you can maintain a water heater. I've replaced hundreds if not thousands of water heaters in my career in plumbing, but I've never cut one open. So I'm excited to see what they look like inside. I hope you are too. All right, so I've got two heaters here. This one is a 18 year old water heater. Um, it was leaking at the top and on the bottom of it. Um, these are both natural gas heaters. This one is gonna have a lot of buildup inside of it and should be interesting to see what that looks like. This is an eight year old water heater. This one was also leaking at the top. Um, oh, and I know why. This one, they ran copper directly into this galvanized nipple that caused electrolysis. Um, when you have two different metals touching each other, you get what's called electrolysis where they don't like to be next to each other, cause corrosion and rust to happen very rapidly. So every water heater is gonna have a data plate on it. That's gonna tell you the manufacturing date, the serial number, the model of the water heater. Um, some manufacturers put that manufacturing date straight on there separately other water heaters will have that manufacturing date hidden in the serial number in there. Um, this one tells us that it is from February of 2016. Um, so that makes it easy. That was eight years ago. So expecting there to be some corrosion and calcium buildup inside of there. All right, now for the fun part, we're gonna cut these guys open, take a look inside. So these have an outside layer and then two inches of insulation or about an inch and a half insulation as we'll see once we pop this off. And then there's an inside liner that is what actually holds the hot water or holds the water inside of it. So we just got through the first layer. I gotta pop this off. We'll have to clean out some of the insulation and then, uh, then we can cut through the second layer, which is gonna be thicker. Um, let me go grab a pry bar. So here you can see that it's about two inches, inch and a half of insulation in there. Um, that's what help, helps keep that water heater warm, keep your water hot, um, keep everything from freezing. And then you can see in here, there's a steel liner. Um, that's actually what that water's inside of. And so that's where you end up getting cracks. Once this starts to rust and go bad, you can end up with hairline fractures inside of it. Um, they usually happen on the bottom. The way a gas water heater works is um, there's a burner assembly that essentially just heats up this liner that, um, heats up the water inside of the liner, and then um, over time, that's gonna break down because it's heating itself up all the time. So you actually see electric water heaters are gonna last longer than gas ones are because those electric water heaters just have a heating element at the top and at the bottom. That heating element is inside and is heating up the water with that. Um, much easier to replace than replacing a burner assembly or a gas valve or anything like that. Um, and it also, because the electric heaters aren't heating up the liner themselves, that's why they're gonna last significantly longer than a gas style water heater. All right, we made it through the insulation and the outer layer. Um, now we're cutting into the liner inside that actually has the water in there um, and we'll see what we find. Oh yeah. So 
you can see we've got quite a bit of calcium buildup down on the bottom of here, um, as well as all around in here. This is our cold side dip tube. So this is where your cold water comes into. It gets heated up on the bottom and then gets forced back up through the top because um, hot water is gonna rise. So it's automatically gonna go up to the top, especially with cold water pushing down on it. Um, this is your exhaust flume. So this is what comes from that gas burner assembly down on the bottom, um, pushes that exhaust up through the top, up through the roof of your house. Um, this is our old anode rod. What an anode rod does um, is it collects calcium and magnesium on it um, to help this water heater last longer. Um, this one is pretty beat up. You can see when this went in, it was all a singular um, piece. It is not anymore. It's got chunks taken out of it. Um, that break down over time um, and it it really just degrades over time. This is what is in your water um, and this is what is causing problems throughout the house when you get buildup at individual fixtures. Um, and this is why we recommend flushing a water heater at least every year is to get all this uh, buildup out. And I would guess that they actually were flushing this every once in a while because um, that's not a crazy amount. There's going to be way more in that one, I hope. Um, knowing the amount of calcium and magnesium that we have in the water in the Austin area in Central Texas, I would say that they flushed this a couple times. I don't know if they were, do I, I doubt they were doing it every year. but it definitely could be a whole lot worse. Um, but that regular flushing is what's gonna keep all this buildup from happening, help your heater last longer. So that's what an eight year old water heater looks like. So this is our 18 year old heater. I did expect there to be a lot more sediment in the bottom of it, given that it's 10 years older than the other one we cut open. Um, it looks like these guys must have been doing some regular maintenance, flushing that heater, um, hopefully once a year. There's definitely still some pretty big chunks of sediment down in there um, that, I mean, no matter how many times you flush it, you're still gonna end up with some, uh, some stuff down in there. It's um, still quite a bit of sediment. What is interesting here, so this is the original anode rod to the tank. Um, as you can see, there's pretty much nothing left um, in there. This is a new anode rod. It's part of a four year warranty extension kit. Um, but this is what that anode rod should look like when it goes in and what this once upon a time looked like. Um, and as you can see now, it is uh, pretty much down to nothing, nothing that's left. That just gets eaten away at by the corrosive material that comes into the tank and causes the whole tank to break down. So anode rods do have an expiration date. Um, manufacturers recommend replacing them every five to seven years. Um, staying on top of that is going to help the liner inside of the heater uh, last longer as the job of the anode rod is to protect it from that corrosive material. So you should be replacing your anode rod every five years, flushing it once a year, and then if you're doing all that, you'll get the full lifespan out of your tank style water heater. What we can also see now that we have both of these cut open, um, water heaters before 2012 only we're required to have one inch of insulation um, of this foam insulation on there. Um, so you can see there's one inch here. And then if we look at this one, you've got two inches of foam insulation. Um, that's gonna help that if the efficiency of the water heater and it doesn't have to work as hard to stay hot. 
So this one we know is 18 years old. I would say for an 18 year old water heater, it is actually in pretty good condition. There's not a crazy amount of sediment. I was expecting to find a huge pile of sediment down in the bottom of this thing. Um, so it looks like the customer that we removed this from was staying on top of uh, flushing it at least semi-regularly. Um, obviously the anode rod is toast and not doing anything for it right now. But all in all, this is in a, a, a pretty good shape for an 18 year old water heater. Um, and that just goes to show if you take care of your water heater, you can get a full almost 20 years out of them. Um, if you're flushing it regularly, changing out the anode rod and not running it at the highest temperature it can go is all gonna help, help it last as long as it possibly can. So this customer also may have had a water softener. Um, a water softener or a filter system is going to help with that buildup that happens inside of the tank from that calcium and magnesium um, that you get in the water um, that causes the buildup inside of the tank and at all the fixtures throughout the house. So if you have a water softener and then are flushing your heater, you're gonna maximize the life expectancy of that heater. All right, well that concludes our water heater autopsy for today. Um, as you can see, what happens to a water heater as it ages is that buildup on the inside, that anode rod deteriorating, um, and it's gonna leak eventually, it's just a matter of when. And staying on top of your regular maintenance is the most important thing to help your water heater last as long as it possibly can. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. And my weird hand stuff. <laughs>